Bride of Higara. This is Captain Soban of the fleet, Farron Shah. Looks like you could use a hand. Attention all Sobani, pick your targets and engage. Hello everyone! Hello, hello! This is Captain Soban. Welcome aboard to Starship and Norma Prize for another episode of, or for another homeworld tutorial, I should say. This isn't really an episode. Um, I guess you could say this is an episode, but it's more of a continue part thing. Part three? Something like that. Anyways, hopefully with the power of mermaids, I will be able to help you guys understand how to make your own single player and multiplayer map additions or edits or at least understand what you're looking at when it comes to um, Homeworld 1 coding. So anyways, let me go ahead and uh, bring up uh, the coding. We're going to be working on uh, single player stuff first. There's actually a lot less stuff you have to edit in single player in order for it to work right than in multiplayer. Because multiplayer, there's a lot more files you have to keep track of because each player has their own file. Where single player, you only have one because um, part of the AI is part of the, your file. So let's go ahead and take a look at the single player stuff. I'm going to go ahead and open up the extracted files that we have um, that we made in the uh, first tutorial. We need to go go ahead and open that up and we need to go into single player. This keeps track of all of the, um, the single player scripts and um, missions. So if you open that up, you'll see that there are 18 missions. Now, if you ever played Homeworld, you know there's only 16 single player missions. So what are 17 and 18? Those are the tutorial missions. 17 is tutorial 1, 18 is tutorial 2. I don't know why they didn't name it like tutorial whatever, but maybe that's just how the coding works. So that would mean that technically if this was working right, um, then that means when you do the tutorials, those are like um, epic logs. <laughs> if we would go by the numbers. But anyways, don't worry too much about that. Um, let's go into mission 1. Um, this is the uh, very... Uh, very first mission in the game and as you can see we have a bunch of different files now all of these files here that in a dist the dot dist um, these are files that are used for resources and each one of these has their own uh, resource generator so like small and teeny so like if you open them up um, like we open up asteroid center you'll see that this one has a one next to asteroid three this means um, this is the spawner for this um, this asteroid cluster, and each one of these is a different type of asteroid. The, the higher the number, the larger the asteroid. So this one is only going to be spawning the asteroid size 3 uh, for the spawner. And I will teach you guys more about this later, but uh, um, we're not really going to be looking at that. So yeah, so that's what those mean. Um, this one here, loading.jpg, this is the file that shows up on the loading screen when it's when you're loading the mission. Uh, mission 01, uh, this is the actual mission file that the game will be loading. This is what loads everything. And then we have resource sphere 1. These are This is the file that holds all of the scripts and stuff that we can edit um, to adjust things on the map. Like I... Like, this ha has that script that I, I posted in the community tab when I was uh, hinting about this uh, this tutorial. Uh, so this is the one that we'll be editing the most, because it has mo we have most of the access to it. But let's go ahead and mission up, um, load up, uh, or open Mission 01 Mission. And as you can see, Mission Sphere, this is what that file is that I was just talking about. And this also has everything... Um, that's more like for the background and for like the script side of the of the mission. So like lighting, um, this is the different lighting effects because apparently each map has its own lighting effect. Um, background, this is the the galactic background image that the that's going to be um, loading up when you uh, start the mission. SM Def Q radius and SM Def Stark um, Q radius. I'm not exactly sure what these are. I haven't really messed with them. Um, so uh, uh, use at your own risk. A small circle border, same thing. Not too sure what this is, but SM zoom max and XM zoom minimum. This is how, how far you can zoom in sensor mode. So this is how far away you can zoom, 250 kilometers. Um, and this is the minimum, which is 30,000 kilometers. So in minimum zoom distance, uh, you'll be able to see up to 30,000 kilometers of sensors and maximum will be 250 when zoomed all the way out. 
and zoom initial distance. This is how far away the zoom starts um, when you hit spacebar for the first time on the mission. And SM universal size X, Z, and Y. This is how large the map is in the game. And this can be as large as you want. Homeworld 1 doesn't really have a limit on how big the map is. The only limitation is probably the engine. Uh, since it's an old engine, it doesn't have it doesn't accept a whole lot of resources, which I'm sure there's probably a patch or something to fix that. But um but yeah. So X is how wide the map is, uh, Z is how tall the map is, so um up and down, Y is how um long the map is. So this map is 55,000 um, meters or 55 kilometers um, wide, 29 kilometers tall, and 55,000 um, kilometers long. And then are you as needed for next hyperspace jump? I do not know exactly what this means. I probably um, wouldn't recommend messing with this. I'm assuming this is something that runs in the background that allows you to hyperspace to the next level when all conditions are complete. So again, I wouldn't mess with this. It would be weird if it actually costs a thousand RUs to jump to the next mission, but I'm sure there's something in the background that prevents that price from actually going through, so I wouldn't mess with those. Excluded ships. Th these are all of the ships that are excluded off of the map, so the the game won't load um, the textures and everything for all of these uh, um, all of these resources. And again, this is for back in the day when Homeworld 1 first came out, where they really had to limit the resources because we didn't have computers powerful enough to handle things that they can now. So we probably actually don't really need this stuff anymore, but we'll keep it in um, uh, for that reason. And then included um, ships or included derelicts. Uh, these are ships that are included in the map, and this is Planet of Origin, which is what uh, um, in the coding is of Karak. Um, creates the scaffold because it's mission one and then the base color stripe color I think this is just the um, the default um, colors if you load homeworld for the first time and not actually pick your colors and then the available ooh, available color schemes so these are different color schemes throughout the game um, that you could use like the elite elite um, scenes the derelict scenes the, the like tyrannic raiders uh, they're all available in this one and this is actually interesting because um, this will probably be a way to uh, uh, make it to where elites uh, work all the time. Because uh, I had a buddy of mine that's helping me with this, and he was wondering how to um, how to actually make that. So that, that's probably the solution right here. We just have to add it to this area. But yeah, these are all the colors that uh, will be used by the ships. And then mission start enemy are used. Uh, mission one, there are no enemies, so they just set to the highest value which is interesting, and this is song number, this is a song that plays on the mission. You could set this to any value you want. Okay, and that is everything that you need to know about the mission 01 mission file. Again, the only thing that I really mess around with is lighting and background, especially when I do my multiplayer missions. But everything else you don't really need to mess with. So, with that out of the way, let's open up Research Sphere 1, and I'll try to make sense of all the mumbo jumbo in this one. Because as you see, if you open it up, you see a bunch of numbers and a bunch of lines that are really, really confusing when you look at it for the very first time. <laughs> so, I will go ahead and start off by talking about the very first um, stuff that we see all the way here on the left. The this is the grouping of the code that you that you see over here. So like AI point, this this means that this group right here is something to do with the um, with the AI and how it uh, um, how it reacts to things. Uh, resources. This is the group that um, um, consists of all of the harvestable materials. Um, derelict. This is a group that just says. Uh, that this ship is a derelict, which uh, this one is, the planet of origin, because in Homeworld you actually could go to um, the planets if you want to, they're just giant objects on the map. They're just really far away and you can't access it because the universe is too small. And ships, this indicates that this item is a ship. And I believe that's the only other ones that are really important. Um, AI Sphere. Uh, this, uh, I guess, this gives the access to AI for like certain things. I'm not entirely sure what this one is. 
I know it says everything here right here, uh, but just uh, just keep in mind that this is something to do with the AI. Probably shouldn't mess around with it too much. Um, AI path. Um, you this uh, indicates that this uh, coding right here is something to do with um, um, with a ship movement order. So like as you can see here, it says salvage path. And if I know from mission one, there is a drone that we're supposed to salvage. And um, I believe that once it spawns, it starts this uh, this trigger and it moves to a certain location um, through like a waypoint system. So that's that's what that one means. But just, just keep in mind, anything that says AI path is usually some sort of AI movement order that's triggered by some sort of script. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to talk about this coding right here because this coding is kind of um, universal for most of the things that are in Homeworld. So once you understand this, it, then it's kind of easy to understand what's going on in the um, in the code. Okay, so the next thing we want to take a look at is um, the resources. And we're going to take a look at this very first one right here. Um, in decoding, most of the um, of the resources and ships have very similar coding. There's a couple things that are different from the, from ships, but resources is probably the easiest one to understand. So we're going to take a look at this one. And um, before I really talk about that, I did get a build a picture for us to make this a little bit easier. Hopefully, you understand how this works. So this is a picture of um, mission one. I went in sensor mode and just took a picture of it so that we can understand this a little bit better. I'm hoping, hoping to make it easier for you guys. But this first one right here is the name of the group, which this one is asteroid, because that's, that's what it is. It is an asteroid that's gonna be spawned in using this code. And um, this is important um, in some missions where like, um, um, some units will have movement orders or guard orders or harvest orders. Um, basically, you just have to make sure that the groups are the same so that they do what you need to do. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, we'll, I'll cover that um, when we get to it. So this first number here, negative 17,125.7. This is the X coordinate of, the, of wherever this asteroid is going to be spawning in. And the X coordinates in Homeworld are the left and right um, locations. So this direction is if you go um, P, like if, you, if the number starts going positive, it'll go in that direction. And then it'll go the right direction if it's negative. So if there's anywhere you want it to be on the map, and just reduce the, increase the number to move it to the left and reduce the number to move it to the right. Now the second number here, right next to it, uh, negative 21,623.0, this is the Y coordinate. And Y coordinate um, is um, up if it's positive, and then it will be down if it's negative. So for instance, like if you, if you have the asteroid that's spawning in right here and you want it to move down you would reduce this number or increase it if it's negative um, to move it down on the map and then if you want it to go up you move uh, you move it up using the positive or by making this number go up and then if you want to move it up if it's negative like this you would bring it up to a higher value um, like that and then it will move it will move it up on the map and this third number here is the z axis which will move it above the map so like imagine the mothership is on the map and you're trying to move an asteroid field above it then you would increase this value and it'll move it above the map so if i set this to a thousand this would be a kilometer higher than what it currently is at and if you remove it negative, so like a negative 1,000, it'll bring it down. So it'll go below the mothership's plane. So you have X, which moves it left and right, Y, which is up and down, and then Z, or Z, which is above and below. Hopefully, hopefully that's making sense. <laughs> so this next one here, where it says sphere, this is the type of asteroid field um, that you're spawning. A sphere 
is just like it will spawn the asteroids in a sphere formation. There are, there are other ones. Well, not a, it will spawn the asteroids in a big sphere. Like think of it like a um a like a marble. I know it's a really really bad circle, <laughs> but it's just gonna spawn a giant three dimensional sphere of asteroids. There are other ones that you can use as well, like cylinder and box and. Um, or I think it's called square, uh, square in uh, in the home world, um, but those are just different ways that it's going to spawn the asteroids in the position you tell it to spawn. Now this one here, asteroid long dot distance. This is the the file it's going to use to spawn those asteroids. So if we go back to our folder and we go to asteroid long, this is the file that it's going to be using. And this currently is only set to use Asteroid Zero. Now, Asteroid Zero is not an actual asteroid in Homeworld. These are the little pebbles that you see throughout the mission. Like, they are these, these little guys that you see all over the place. These are not harvestable, and they're used to just make the map um, atmospheric. So that's what, that's what this line of coding is actually going to be uh, spawning. So this number right here is very simple. This is just how many asteroids that are going to spawn within this line of coding. So the higher number this is, the more it will spawn, and the denser the asteroid field will look like. Will look. This next number here, this is how wide the sphere will be um, that spawns all of these um, these asteroids. And I believe this is calculated from a radius, so it, it takes the radius from where it is at the middle of where you actually spawn um, from uh, these three locations, and it just radiates it out that way. And the second one here is how tall um, the sphere is. So, so think of it as this and this. This one right here is the first number. Where this one right here is the second number. And it uses those two numbers to calculate exactly how big the sphere is supposed to be that uh, that is actually going to spawn all of the asteroids. And then these numbers right here don't really matter for, um, for the sphere because it only uses the first two numbers. So do not worry too much about those unless you're doing cylinder like a cylinder uses three numbers because it has three dimensions it has to calculate. Um, square only uses one number, I believe, because it just takes that one number and multiplies it by all of the all of the other dimensions to make a square because a square is you know equal size of everything. <laughs> and that hopefully makes a little bit of sense, but that's how that's how the resources um, actually um, are calculated and spawn on the map. And as you can see, they do it multiple times because uh, they like making their the asteroid fields really, really nice. Next, I'll teach you guys about ships because this is the only other thing that you really need to know in order to really um, modify the maps and uh, and um, stuff going on. So let's take a look at the TDF formation trial. These are the drones that will be spawning in the um, um, in the game. Um, at the very beginning when it tells you to do the tactical trial. So, so obviously the this one here, that, that's exactly what this, uh, this means right here, um, the first formation. This one right here is the tactics trial, which is the second trial that goes on um, in part of this, on this uh, mission. And then, uh, then this is the X coordinate of where that, um, that uh, drone um, spawns. This is the Y coordinate. This is the Z coordinate. Now this one right here, which is a little bit different than the resources, this is the rotational coordinate. So zero means it'll be facing straight. Nine, negative 90 means it'll be facing towards the um, west. Negative 180 will be facing towards the south. Negative 270 will be facing towards the east. Or you can go in the positive direction because it doesn't really matter. You're spinning in a circle. So 90 degrees means it'll be facing towards the east, 180 be facing towards the south, 270 be facing towards the west. So just, just imagine you're looking straight and then you're turning this many degrees. 
uh, when trying to figure out this one. Now R1 here, this is the faction that the um, uh, that this ship that's spawning in is part of. R1 is um, faction 1, which in the campaign means whatever faction you are. Um, so R so if you're playing as a Taidan, then R1 is Taidan, R2 is Kushan. If you're playing as Kushan, um, R1 is Kushan, R2 is Taidan. So that can get a little bit confusing, but that's what this means. And then target drone, this is the ship that is spawning in. Um, one, this is the number of ships that are going to be spawning in at this coordinate. Um, delta formation, this is the formation that, that the uh, um, ship is going to be using. And you can set it to any of the formations in the game. X formation, claw formation, wall formation, parade formation. Or if you don't want it to be in formation, you put null formation. N-U-L-L. -L. And then this, not sure where this is, I just leave this alone. I'm sure it's something to do with the code. Color scheme, uh, this is what color um, the ship is gonna use. Normally this is zero, which means it matches the player. Uh, but this one is a very specific color scheme because the target drones, I guess, have to be a very specific color. This one, not sure where this is, not exactly sure where this is. But this very last one is how many ships would be spawning in if the game deems that um, your fleet is too strong, which means it uses the advanced formula. And this has to be equal to or greater than this one. If it's less than, that will cause the game to crash. So this is a good way for like if you want to have like five ships spawn in, but notice the enemy or that the uh, the player has a really large fleet, and you can tell it you can set this to like 15, and it'll spawn 15 of those of those ships in on that mission. So that's what that one means. Yeah, that is all of the um, uh, that is all of the data for what all of this stuff actually means. <laughs> now, um, let's play around with it a little bit. First off, let's start with the resources. So we know that asteroid long is just the the dust clouds. So if we go down to which I believe is close to the bottom. Okay, my bad. Um, I found it. It's near the really the top. It's like second line to the top. <laughs> so, anyways, go over here to where you see this value. If you have my mod, this should say six. If you have the normal game, um, it's probably gonna say a different value. Uh, good. I I I changed this uh, for the homeworld hardcore mod. Um, so go ahead and just set that to sixty. Um, we're gonna play around with the spawner, and then go ahead and hit file, um, save. Then what we want to do is we want to move our modified, um, uh, our first modification of mission one to the actual game files. So it will load it. So um, go to your um, homeworld directory. Um, you probably don't have the single player folder in at the moment. So what you want to do is you want to copy and paste the single player um, a folder over into here so that you have the uh, modifi modified uh, file. Okay, for those of you that are um, using my mod or some other um, homeworld modification, be sure to back up the single player folder um, so that you have the um, so that you have a copy of the other mod and be sure to name it like something like homeworld hardcore mod backup or whatever mod that you guys currently have on a uh, on uh, classic. Um, so that you have that version compared to the one that we are um, we are modifying. So, all right, and then once that's done, go ahead and double click the resource sphere just to make sure that our modification um, actually went into effect because sometimes it doesn't. And I think that's just more or less notepad being weird or me just having too many notepads opened and forgetting about it. Uh, go ahead and launch the game and get into single player. Okay, and to test our modification, we know which mo which uh, map we were modding, which is mission one. So we got to go to single player and start a new game. Skip until we get here, and then if we zoom out, we should see a gigantic cluster of asteroids. <laughs> so if you see something like this, the mod act the mod worked. 
Test construction by building the primary okay. research. And once we're done, um, let's go ahead and exit out, and I will show you how to um, uh, replace ships to make them other ships. We're going to replace the target drone with something else. So, for this next part, um, we are going to replace the target drones with the Bentuzi. So, in order to do that, we need to go to, I uh, believe it is. We need to go back into our res resource sphere one, open that full file back over up, and we know that all of these are the first formation trials, and this right here is the ship that they use to spawn in. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how to spawn the Bentuzi. So what we have to do is we have to go back to our main um, extracted big file, and we need to find the folder that says traders, because this is what holds the Bentuzi information. So open that folder. Scroll down it until you'll see Floating City. This is what is um, the the file for the Bentuzi. So we're not going to modify that. We were just trying to find it. So what we can do here is the faction is Traders. So we need to change this to Traders. And then this needs to be on the Floating City because that's the ship we're trying to spawn in. Then once you're done, just take this, copy it, and do it for the um, the other target drones. Okay, and then once you're done and you have all of them set to Traders Floating City, let's get back in the game, launch it, and uh, see if the target drones have been replaced with Bentuzis. If you try to save the game and then reload it with uh, new changes to the file, they will not apply because it does not read the file in a save game and only reads the file if it loads the mission for the first time. So do keep that in mind whenever we're making these adjustments um, in single player. So go ahead and start a new game. Okay. And if you safely, if it loads into the game like this, that means that we did a good job. If it doesn't and it crashes, it'll give you an error saying, hey, this the ship item is bad. And that means you probably typed something in wrong. Like maybe you, you spelled the uh, trader instead of traders or floating city as in C-A-T-I-E instead of C-I-T-Y. That, that's known as a syntax error. And you'll get those pretty frequently when, when modding. I still make those errors all the time. Uh, but if it loads normally, then that means that the uh, um, that everything went properly. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and uh, we have to wait for the cutscene to actually happen. All right, all right. Should be Bentuzis here. Hostile Bentuzis. If everything went according to plan. Oh, still made them target drones. Okay, so on our map, the Bentuzis didn't actually spawn, and that is probably because they were excluded um, to not spawn on the map. So let's go ahead and go here and get rid of the excluded ships. Save. And let's launch the game again and see if that improves anything. Okay, so I tried doing this a couple times, and I think I figured out why the Bentuzis are not spawning. Because I made the mistake that I usually make when I, mod when I make my mods, and I forgot to transfer it over. So inside the game, we still have the target drones, but my file here says Traders Floating City. So if I went to Save As, I will notice that it says it's from the extracted bit file that we made earlier. So I make this mistake frequently, um, and don't be ashamed if you make this mistake, it's it's just part of the craziness that comes to modding ships. So if I go to, so if I go to my desktop, my extracted big file, go to my single player file, mission one, you, copy you, paste it into the actual game, now I believe the Bentuzi should spawn. So if it was working fine for you guys, congratulations. You did better than me. <laughs> but I make the mistake all the time of getting my my folder for my mod um, and my mod that's actually in my game confused. I try to keep them separated so I don't accidentally um, mod something I didn't want to do and then lose it forever because I overrid the wrong one. Anyways, let's see if this works now. Okay. And as you can see, the target drones 
are now Ventusies. <laughs> so that's awesome. So yeah, just be sure that when you do your mods, then make sure that you know you keep your folder separated for uh, backup redundancies, but make sure that um, um, that you do check the file that you transferred over that it actually transferred over. And you can do dumb stuff like this. <laughs> but next, um, next we'll practice around with uh, moving the asteroid field around. Next, next we'll move around some of the asteroids, and then um, I might save multiplayer modding for another another video because this one took a little bit longer to explain than I was expecting. But yeah, um, let's get into it. Okay. So next one, um, we are going to mess around with the asteroid field. We've already gave it more asteroids, but I want to move it. I think it's too close to the mothership. So I don't exactly know where I want it to go. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to modify one of these values and see what it does and then modify it from there. So um, I'm going to set this to a positive 8000, which will move it um 16 kilometers to the left i'm hoping but this is more or less trial and error i'm trying to just um figure out where we want things to be and also um to make sure that i don't make that mistake again um yeah let's go ahead and save and then i will grab my folder which i should have nope i actually exited out of it my bad i need to grab a new folder from my desktop and then I need to go to extracted big file, then go to single player, mission one, take the one that we just modified, move it over here, mission one, and replace. There we go. And now let's get back into the game and figure out where that asteroid field went. Okay, after relaunching the game, as you can tell, the asteroid field is now on the other side of the mothership. So it went from over here to over here. <laughs> I think this map might be in the opposite direction, which is why moving it to the left actually moved it to the right. Shut up! Go away. Oh, there come the Bentusies. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so moving that over, move the asteroid field to the right. I kind of want to move it up. But it looks like this map, this map is inverted. Stand by to begin combat. So what we're going to do instead is uh, we are actually going to be moving it down. Because I think, I think the map is actually in this direction. I want to move it to like right here. So let's go ahead and do that. I think mission 5 or mission 15 is the only one where the map is actually facing the way it's supposed to be. The other ones are kind of like in some sort of angle where you really, really have to guess a lot in order to get them in the, the correct position. So in order to do what we wanted to do, um, I want to bring it forward, which means I have to bring it back because the map is inverted. So let's go ahead and add a 1 here. So this would be 16,331. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, um, but these are in meters on the map. So if you want to move it like 20 kilometers, it would be 20,000 meters. Just an FYI, because I don't think I actually mentioned that. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll save. Grab the folder that it's in, which is this one over here. Copy. Uh, put it back into single player. Paste. Place the mission file. Go. And now let's reload the game. I think my brain just is inverted. Apparently, doing that moved it backwards, so let's get back in there and move it the other direction. Doing all this modification is a lot of trial and error. So let's make this a positive 6,000. And a good way I could probably figure this out is if we looked at the formations, um, it is 15,000 and start point player, this is where the mothership spawns, is negative 14,000. So yeah, as, as it goes forward, it gets positive. Um, so this actually isn't inverted, my brain is just inverted. 
<laughs> so that's a good way to like judge on a map of like what you want to adjust. You could look at a at a position on the actual map and be like, okay, so that's forty thousand. I'm at five thousand. I want to spawn something in the middle, so I need to set it to two thousand or twenty thousand, I should say. So that should now be correct, and. I also want to bring the asteroid field up a little bit. So let's bring this asteroid field up to 5,000. This will bring it, bring the field up um, some as well. So let's go ahead and save and launch the game again. Oh, wait. Um, first, we got to transfer the file over. Then we can launch it. Okay, okay. All right, now if we see on the map, the asteroid field is now um, a little bit higher, and it's now in front of the mothership. Now, this asteroid field feels really, really small, so let's see if we can widen it more and maybe increase its height some more. So that's the next thing we're going to do. Okay, so we want to make it a little bit more wide. This number right here, next to how many we have spawned, um, should increase it's width, although it looks like this one number is bigger, so this might actually be height and um, might be the Z axis, where this one is the X and Y axis. Sometimes it's really hard to tell by the way the code is, but again, trial and error. Always test one thing at a time and just adjust it and be like, okay, so this is what this means, so the other one must be what I need. So let's go ahead and double this to 12,000. This should make the asteroid field much wider. Let's go ahead and save this. And now that we're actually making the field wider, this will make the field less dense as well, because it's only going to spawn 60 within this radius. So let's go ahead and get into the game again and check this out. Also, don't forget to, uh, to copy this over. I forgot to do it again. As you can see now, the asteroids are now um, lot longer. It's not exactly a sphere anymore, it's more like a cylinder. But let's see if we can straighten the asteroid field out real quick, and then we'll try to reduce adjust the height. So this number back here, which is used by a very few of the asteroids, is the rotational um, adjustment of the uh, um, of the asteroid field. So it's like the, the cylinder, um, like rotational um, alignment. So if we set this to zero, I believe this should um, straighten that, um, that field out so it's aligned with the, um, um, with the origin of the map, I believe. Uh, let's go ahead and save. And again, here, uh, single player one, copy and paste you. and that should adjust that value. All right, and now as you can see, it is now aligned in this direction because the Y axis is wider than the X axis. So that's why it came out like this. And now I want to make it longer in this direction. So let's now get that going. Okay, so as we can see here by the code, um, this. It's really wide because of this value, but we want it to be kind of more like an actual field. So let's adjust this value to 8,000, which should make it go a little bit longer. This is, um, the way the maps work can make it really, really confusing to try to explain like the X, Y, and Z axis, um, because a lot of these single player maps are have it to where the mothership is facing in like a 90 degree angle or like a 30 degree angle. So when you're trying to make an asteroid field lined up with it, it's really, really difficult to make it to make it like that. Um, you can modify the final value, which I believe is this one right here that we modified earlier um, to to make it line up with the mothership so it's easier to actually align things but uh, um, we're just gonna mess with it the way it is. So let's let's make this a little bit wider. And now let's see what it looks like. Okay, and as we can see now, the asteroid field is a lot taller. I also disabled the, the voices for this so to make it a little bit easier for you guys to understand. So that looks a lot more like a field. It's still very squarey, but it looks a lot more like, a, like an actual asteroid field. Uh, we would have to reduce the numbers to make it, you know, look 
more like a field than just a square box that's spawning units in. <laughs> Alright, but next I'm going to show you guys how to spawn additional units in um, for some of the scripts that are used in the game. Um, so we're going to be spawning in Tyrannic Raider Carriers and Needle Ships on the, the Kadesh Motherships as well as the Bentuzis. So, let's get into that. So the first thing we want to do is look for the, the TDF Formation Trial, which is all these ones up here. Um, take the bottom one, hold down Control c and copy it about two, three, four, five, let's do six times. And then by doing that, as you can tell, all of them are exactly the same. We don't want them all to spawn directly on top of each other. So let's take the, the X value and we will modify it. Um, let's make the, the second one 3,000. We'll, we'll separate them by 2,000 meters. Um, all like this. So now, now all of the new units will not spawn on top of each other. Now, next thing we want to do is we want to make three of them Tyrannic Raider Carriers and three of them Needle Ships. So you want to go into uh, P1, which would be in uh, your extracted file, if you, uh, um, which I'm pretty sure if you've been following my uh, my tutorial, this set all of this hasn't gone in. So you would have to do it in the, the um, extracted file. And then we want to look down to P1 Mothership. And we're not going to open up the file, we just need to know what it's called so we can put it in the in the mod correctly. So, um, for this top one right up here, I want the traders to be P1, then a P1 Mothership. For the, the second one. And then to copy that, paste it onto this one, and paste it onto the next one. And now we want to go to we want to go back to your main um, folder that has all the extracted files. Go to P2, because this is the um, the the Kadesh stuff, and we want it to be the P2 mothership, which is right here. That's the needle ship. So same thing. Take the traders on the next one below it. Turn traders into P2, and then next one you want to be P2 Mothership. I don't exactly know why they named all the Kadesh and uh, Tyrannic Raiders P1 and P2 instead of just having their actual name, but that, that's the way it is in the coding. And I messed up here. Um, we're actually going to have, well, actually, no, we can fix it right here. Because I accidentally copied the this one, not our copies. So. Traders uh, Floating City, replace that one with this one. There we go. Take P2 Mothership, replace it with that one, that one, that one, P, paste, save. And now we go to where we save the mod. Mission one, resource sphere, and paste it in here. Place. Okay. And now let's load the game and hopefully if everything works we should not crash and we should have target drones of needle ships and tyrannic carriers as well as the bentuzis okay game has successfully loaded i still have them muted so they're not really talking that much anymore still have our asteroid field over here that's working pretty good oh here we go we're spawning in They're telling us about the target drones. Yep. And here we go. There's the Tranic Raider carriers. Well, once we get close enough. 
and the new needle ships that we spawn in. So hooray! It worked! <laughs> So yeah, that's that's everything you need to know about spawning ships in in um, um, in single player. How to like spawn new resources in. You can also change these resources to dust clouds and everything. Kind of doing the same thing that I did. Um, I was actually show you guys how to do that here in one moment. It's pretty similar to the spawning ships in, but um, um, I'll, it's a uh, slightly different. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you guys that really really quick before we end this so in order to check out all the resources stuff um you would have to open up the um your um, extracted big file look for the folder called resources this folder controls all of the resources in the game so if you open it up you'll see an asteroid folder dust cloud gas clouds and nebula um, so asteroids control all the rocks dust clouds control all the uh the the gray um dust clouds gas clouds are like the the like reddish ones um like later on in the game and nebula is from like mission seven and eight the nebula that you harvest so like let's say we wanted to change um uh, let's say we don't want to harvest asteroids instead we want to harvest dust clouds so what we would have to do is we would have to go into our our um our file here which is single player mission one and we have to pick uh, one of these um, uh, one of these things. So I don't think there's one here. Yeah, there is one here for Dust Cloud. Okay. Um, so what we would have to do is this one is already set to use Dust Clouds. We would just have to go up here to where it says Asteroid Center and change it to Dust Cloud. And then it would use that file. We don't. We can't really use our own files. Unfortunately, so if the map isn't isn't already set up to use dust clouds, you probably won't actually be able to use it. Um, at least I haven't really found a workaround for that. I tried actually um, changing like these to maybe I just I might have just spelt it wrong. I tried changing like some of these to a different like name, but it kept uh, kept crashing, saying that it doesn't exist or something, or that the value wasn't set. Uh, so you can only like change these ones. But the, the way the frequency works is this is um, when it when it spawns all of the uh, the clouds in or all the asteroids in this this it takes this number and kind of just like throws it into a, a dice pool of what I will spawn. So I had so if I have this first one set to like five, this one set to ten, and this one set to fifteen, there's a very high chance it's going to spawn these and low chances that it's going to spawn these. So think of it as like it'll add all the numbers together to thirty and then it'll ro roll a dice. And what number it picks, that's the the, the dust cloud it, it's going to spawn. So if it does like 1 through 5, it'll spawn this. 10 through 15, or 5 through 15, or 6 through 15, it'll spawn this. And then 16 through 30, it'll spawn this. So it's really cool. It's really cool how they do that to make everything like really cool and random. But let's go ahead and save this change. And um, let's save this one as well. You are, yep, you are there. Boop. We'll copy and paste uh, this one over here into our single player folder. And if this works right, those asteroids should now be dust clouds. Okay, so I kept getting errors when I was trying to turn everything into dust clouds. Um, I have, I think I found a workaround. So. The script for Homeworld is very picky um, when it comes to adjusting things. Like, it doesn't want me to get rid of the um, asteroid field and turn it into dust clouds because then it doesn't know where the asteroid field is, so it freaks out. So a workaround I did is I made, brought back the asteroid field, but I set it to one asteroid and spawned it really, really, really far away from the map. <laughs> so this should work. And um, by doing that, I just copied and pasted this one, set it to Asteroid instead of Dust Cloud, and then set it to Asteroid Center for the, the script it's going to read, and just set this to a really high value of 800,000. So this should work, and this might be a workaround for you guys that want to modify the single player maps that have Nebula or, um, or Dust Clouds when it's not really supposed to have that stuff. So let's go ahead and try this and make sure this actually launches. Alright, and now as you can see, the asteroid field that used to be here is now 
dust cloud feel. <laughs> uh, and I don't think we can see where the asteroid is that I spawned on the map that the game wanted to have, just so it can actually uh, um, get the game running. But yeah, that's some of the weird things about the scripts, that sometimes when you mess with things, it'll like break the game. You'll be like, we can't run the game because this file doesn't exist. It's like, I didn't want it to exist anyways. So yeah, I think that's going to be the end of this tutorial. Um, uh, next tutorial, we're going to look at how to actually create our own um, like multiplayer maps. Uh, and uh, I think it's going to be really, really fun. And we can add like challenges and whatnot to the map. So yeah. Um, and I also teach you guys how to like, well, never mind. I taught you guys how to do that in this tutorial of how to spawn your own ships and um, have them like just be there so you can actually take care of them. So anyways, yeah, I think that's going to do it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed everything that hopefully you learned and hopefully I, I taught in a decent um, fashion. But, uh... Oh god, they actually engage us. Oh, interesting. I was not expecting that. <laughs> You're supposed to be target dummies, dude. You're not supposed to engage. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy this. Um, I told my harvester to attack, and he's gonna die from the. Yeah. Um, take care of yourself, harvester, in the best way possible. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy this. Please leave a like if you did. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. I'll check you guys out in the next video. Until then, this is Captain Soban signing out. Hyperspace procedures initiated. The mothership must survive.